In today's video, I wanna talk about the next price target of Bitcoin because the next six months are about to make or break the story that is Bitcoin, which I know sounds way out there, but let me just explain. Let's rewind back to when this all started, which was March 2019, when a guy by the name of Plan B applied what's called the stock to flow model to Bitcoin. Now, a lot of what this video is, is based on his research, so full credit goes to him, but the stock to flow model is used to predict the price of scarce and limited resources. Things like platinum, gold, silver, invisibility cloaks, things that we as humans cannot just create more of. Now, he applied the stock to flow model to predict Bitcoin, and in the last 12 years, it's been scary in how accurate this model has been. Now, if we apply Bitcoin to this model, the worst case scenario says that by December of this year, the worst case is that each Bitcoin will be worth $135,000 a coin. That is the worst case scenario of this year by December. Now, the best case scenario is that Bitcoin could touch $450,000 by December of this year, which sounds unbelievable. It doesn't even sound real. So in today's video, I wanna go over exactly how this model works, go behind some of the math, and explain what's about to happen because the next six months are about to get crazy. Hi, my name is Andre Jig. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the magic of the stock to flow model. The way it works is we can compare the stock of Bitcoin, which is the amount of Bitcoin out there in existence, against its flow, which is how many Bitcoins are being created. So the stock of Bitcoin right now, we can go to blockchain.com and see that it's around 18.76 million out of a grand total 21 million Bitcoin possible. And we can also compare that stock against its flow, which we also know roughly every 210,000 blocks, which is about every four years, we get what's called the halving, which is where the block reward gets gets cut in half. Now, the first halving we got in 2012, the second one in 2016, the third one last year in 2020, and the next one will be sometime in the spring of 2024. And you can actually see this right here in this chart. Right here, you can see how the Bitcoin flow will eventually flatline, and the amount of Bitcoins that are flowing into the system will gradually decrease until it eventually hits zero, and there are no more Bitcoins left to mine, which is going to be in the year 2140. Now, when this halving happens, the cost to mine each Bitcoin Bitcoin doubles. So it makes sense that if you're a miner, you're probably not gonna sell your Bitcoin for less than what it cost you to make them. And that is one of the fundamental basic reasons why Bitcoin's price goes up. It goes up because it needs to, to make sense for the people mining them because they need to pay for their electrical costs. And one of the hardest questions to answer in Bitcoin is, what is Bitcoin's fundamental value? Because it doesn't produce anything useful. And there's a lot of things we could look at on chain, like the proof of work. We could look at the amount of new wallets. We could look at the rate of adoption, or we could look at the base price of electrical costs and say that each Bitcoin is worth at least no less than what it costs to make each one. Now, the math behind how this works is pretty straightforward. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm gonna try to explain it as simple as I can. I'm gonna talk a little bit slower this time because math. So the stock to flow model works like this. It it is the stock divided by the flow. So let's use this dude's favorite element on the whole periodic chart, which is Peter Schiff's gold. So gold has a stock of 185,000 tons. That is all the gold that is out there that we as human beings know of today. So 185,000 is gonna be divided by the flow. The flow is the amount of gold we are mining out from the earth. Now that rate today is something like 3,000 tons a year roughly. So now we're going to divide the stock of 185,000 tons by the flow of 3,000 tons, and the answer is 61.6. So let's just round it up to 62 to keep it simple. 62 years is the amount of years that it would take to mine all the gold from the earth to recreate the current stock. Now, obviously, the higher that number is, the longer it takes for humans to mine it from the earth, which means the more rare that element becomes. So now let's apply Bitcoin. The stock of Bitcoin is today roughly 18.7 million, so let's just round it up to 19 million. Now let's divide that by the flow. How do we figure out the flow? Because I was not able to find that answer, so I had to do the math manually, so correct me if I'm wrong, but here's how I figured it out. Right now we know that we're mining roughly 210,000 blocks every four years for every halving. Now, if you divide 210,000 by four, we get a yearly rate of 52,500 blocks, right? 
Now for every block that we mine, we know that miners get rewarded 6.25 Bitcoins. So if we multiply 6.25 times the yearly amount of blocks we mine, that would give us an answer of 328,125 Bitcoins. That is how many Bitcoins we are minting roughly every single year. So now we divide the stock of 19 million by the flow of 328,125 and we get 57.9. So let's round it up to 58. 58 years is how many years it would take for us to mine all of the Bitcoin at the current rate to recreate the current stock. Now 58 years is a long time, but that's still not as long as gold. So that means gold is technically more rare. Except it's not. Because remember that halving period we talked about? Every four years, that block reward gets cut in half. That means the flow of Bitcoin is an ever decreasing variable. So instead of 6.25 like we have today, by the year 2024, that block reward will be 3.125. So I'll save us the math and tell you that in the year 2024, the stock to flow number will be 116. It'll take us 116 years in the year 2024 at that current rate to mint and recreate all the current stock by the year 2024. Now that becomes virtually impossible. In fact, mathematically impossible because the difficulty of Bitcoin also doubles and it just becomes really, really rare. So every four years, that number doubles and doubles and doubles until when we reach the year 2040, when it will take us almost two thousand years to recreate the stock. Now that is a lot, but there's always a but. There's a problem with the stock to flow model. Some people are seeing that there is a huge divergence in the model because now we're going way off course, leading some people to believe that maybe this stock to flow model was completely wrong. So let's dive in. If you look at the graph right now, you can see that Bitcoin is going a lot lower than where it should technically be today because today the price should be something like $84,000 according to the stock to flow model, but at the time of making this video, it's less than half of that, which is nowhere near where it should actually be. That's why people are worried what's gonna happen in the next six months, because in the next six months, we should have a better idea whether the stock to flow model is gonna be bouncing us between 25 to $50,000 or between 100 and $288,000, which is obviously a huge difference. Right now, it's too early to tell, but the next six months should give us a better idea which cycle we're in based on the cycles we've been in the past. So let me just show you. You can see right here, the red line is where we are now after the 2020 halving. And this one right here is the 2012 halving. And this one is after the 2016 halving. So we don't know exactly how we'll go, but we do know based on the 2020 red line right here, it hasn't fully played out just yet. And the biggest reason this is scaring people is because they're saying that this has broken the stock to flow model, that right now our lowest point is lower than it's ever been before in history, and the stock to flow model is broken, we should just throw away these chicken strips. But the truth is, we've actually broken the moving average before. For example, in 2011, there was a huge spike that didn't follow the model. And then in 2013, we had not one one, but two instances where we broke outside the boundary. And in 2017, we did it again. But all of those were to the upside. If the model still works after breaking to the upside, there's zero reasons why we should say it's broken if it breaks to the downside. And that's because the biggest problem with the stock to flow model is, are, is our children learning? <laughs> Oh no. The real problem is that we can't account for human variables. We can't predict what we don't know. For example, in 2017, when we pumped to $20,000, that was because of Tether. But nobody could have predicted the creation of Tether. Same thing in March of 2020 to the downside. When COVID happened, the markets got scared, they sold off, and we touched the bottom of the stock to flow model. So the model still works, we just can't predict certain variables. And if you believe this model to be accurate, right now it's says is a pretty decent time to be buying Bitcoin. But there's always a button there somewhere. There's definitely a few risks you should know about before you yeet all your money into Bitcoin. One of the biggest risks, especially to price, is gonna be regulation. I did a whole entire video about how the Federal Reserve is starting to get scared that because central banks around the world wanna create their own stablecoin, that could be bad because stable coins aren't regulated and banks are supposed to be. So there could be some conflict of interest. And if the government gets scared enough, 
to regulate Bitcoin or stable coins in a way that's not favorable to us, that could drop the price of Bitcoin back down to the $20,000 range, which will make it look as though the stock to flow model is broken. Except when and if that happens, you're going to see a ton of coverage in the media say that Bitcoin just broke the golden rule. It's the end of Bitcoin. and <laughs> It's going to make it seem like it's going to be the end, right? They'll be referring to the stock to flow model and they'll be wrong because the stock to flow model will still work. It's just right now we can't factor in human intervention. That's not a variable we can plan for and plug it into the equation. We just don't know what's going to happen. Another big risk, though, is Tether, which is a stable coin that is printing an infinite amount of tethers. And we don't know if they have enough money on their balance sheet to cover one for one like a stable coin is supposed to be. So if we find out that the emperor has no clothes, then it could drop the price of Bitcoin back down to the $20,000 range. And the last risk is, of course, demand. If one of these things or a combination of the risks I just mentioned happens, then that could scare these institutions institutional investors, banks and retail investors that Bitcoin is just too risky and there's not going to be enough demand, which could drop the price. Now, personally, as far as what I think will happen, either will go lower or higher. I think that this year will go higher or will bob around between 20 to the 45,000, maybe the $65,000 range for about a year until 2021 when we just break out to the upside and we're going to get that exponential curve upward, which hasn't happened just yet. And I'm not just saying that because I have a ton of Bitcoin and I just hope that it'll go up. It's because the stars are aligning and there's a ton of exciting stuff that's going on and here's what some of that is. Amazon just posted a job listing for a digital currency and blockchain tech lead. And you know what that means? Tech lead is about to become the ex-husband, ex-Google, ex-Facebook, ex-Amazon tech lead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Amazon is hiring a crypto expert. And even though right now they don't accept any form of crypto as payment, this job posting proves that at least some point in the future they will. It's only a matter of time. And it makes perfect sense for them, not only from a marketing perspective, which by the way, anytime a major company starts accepting crypto, every major news outlet starts writing about it, but also from a revenue perspective. They'll get to make a little bit of extra money. Can you imagine what would happen to Bitcoin's price if Amazon tomorrow was like, by the way, we accept Bitcoin now. That would trigger the price to go to $100,000 or more. That I can promise. Okay, I can't technically promise that, but it'll be big. 2022, I'm telling you. Also, Elon announced that he, SpaceX, and Tesla all own Bitcoin, which is awesome, and that Tesla will start accepting Bitcoin as payments again once he finds out that at least 50% or more of Bitcoin's mining is coming from renewable sources, which is also awesome, but not awesome at the same time because there's sort of a catch-22 there. Anytime Bitcoin's price goes up really fast, miners are like, wait a minute, I don't want to miss out on all these profits and coal is way cheaper. So they switch and that's going to continue happening until there's an equilibrium between renewables and between dirty energy. But eventually renewables will win out in the end. It's just going to take some time. Also, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest bought over 450,000 shares of GBTC, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, and she's way smarter than me. So if I think I know something, she definitely knows something. And if you're thinking to yourself, Andre, should I buy Bitcoin? That's all I want to know. The answer to that is, I have no idea. I wish I could tell you. I have no idea, but I could put things in perspective for you. This is how much Bitcoin will be worth in about 10 years from now, according to the stock to flow model. By the year 2028, which is just seven years from now, the stock to flow model predicts that each Bitcoin will be worth somewhere in the ballpark of $923,000. So approaching 1 million per coin. That's why I'm still buying Bitcoin even when it's at $30,000 a coin. So when people ask, Andre, when are you going to sell your Bitcoin? I'm like, when Bitcoin's ready, you won't have to. It's something you buy, it's something you hold, and it's something that you pass on to your kids and your future generations. And that's what Bitcoin's all about. But I guess time will tell whether I'm right or wrong, so we'll see. In the meantime, I wanna give a huge amount of credit to Plan B, who did a lot of this research, who made, or rather applied the stock to flow model to Bitcoin. He didn't create it, it was around forever, but he just applied it to Bitcoin and it's been really, really accurate. So if you're a money nerd and if you love Bitcoin, if you love crypto, definitely give him a follow on Twitter if you don't already. 
he'll definitely give your brain some new wrinkles. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the stonk button, subscribe if you haven't already, and go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this link right here. Go get that Bitcoin credit card with the 1.5% Bitcoin rewards on every purchase you make, and go get those two free stocks with Webull. When you deposit $100, you can get two free stocks valued up to $2,300. Go track those stonks automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.